here with Erin Claire Jones, who is a human design expert and leadership coach. And I'm ecstatic to have her on Divine Download today because me and Erin have known each other through different circles for years, probably now. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I absolutely adore following her. Um, and I never do this, literally like never do this on the podcast, but you have to follow her on Instagram because <laughs> oh, I you. love her Instagram. I like the people that listen know this is so not me, but like her Instagram account, just so much value, especially if you're interested in human design. Um, it's just incredible. I always look at it and I feel like every time she posts something, I, it's like a little love note to me about what I need to hear that day. <laughs> and so her Instagram is just Erin Claire Jones. And in her, in her bio, you can actually go and click that link and you can get your own human design blueprint. So if you not, sorry, there's the blueprint, which is the whole explanation, but you can just get your human design chart as well. So if you want to go do that right now while you're listening, if you don't have your human design chart already, that's a great way to know what we're talking about. Um, If if that's too complicated for you, you can also pretty much just Google human design chart. (laughs) But it's really nice and neat at the link in her bio. And so I'm super excited to talk about human design today because human design is something that literally unlocked so many Uh ahas I think is the best way to put it for me in my own life when I found it out but more so in how I operated with my business and how I operated as a leader I think more than anything because there were just these ways of doing things that were not as conventional that I was doing and I was feeling you know guilty or wrong or weird or whatever you want to say that I wasn't able to operate like other people. And when I came to human design and I realized my unique design, I had so much relief, I wanna say. It was like relief of, oh, okay, actually, I have been operating according to my design. It just doesn't look like a lot of other people Mm. and it's okay. And so I've started incorporating it with my light leadership mentees because one of our sessions, I'll go through their astrological chart And I'll go through their human design chart because so much, I like to say like so much is built into our soul blueprint is what I just call it and how Mm -hmm. we kind of incarnated here. There are so many little hints um, as to what we're supposed to be doing here, how we're supposed to be doing it, how we best operate. You know, it's kind of like our own very specific, um, I'm going to call it a rule book. I don't know if that's the best way to say it, but you know, there's so many like law of attraction or all these different things of like this is how everyone should do stuff and then you learn about human design and you're like oh no Mm -hmm. (laughs) this is how specific people should be doing things so why don't you tell me what brought you to human design (laughs) and what were the big like (laughs) how did you come along this path (laughs) I love all that so much. I love the rule book. I always say that like human design kind of gives us our operating manual. It's like we come into this life without a manual and human design just like, here it is. And I think often we spend so much of our lives trying to be so many things that we're not, that it just like, as you said, gives us all the permission. So I had a similar experience when I first discovered my human design where I just felt like a whole lot of relief. You know, I was just like, what? Like I've been operating the opposite of this my entire life. Like, is it actually possible to operate this way? So I discovered human design in 2015. I live in New York and I was at a gathering and a guy sat next to me and like literally looked at my human design on his phone and just like, I'm so open to this stuff, you know, but he started just telling me all this stuff about myself that felt so like simple in the best ways, but also just so intuitive. It really was that feeling where I was like, wow, all this stuff so feels like me, but it also feels like I've never allowed myself to step into any of it because like I've had a very different idea of what I thought it was supposed to look like. And so you know, he really intrigued me. Like I had not heard human design anywhere around me at that point. And, you know, it was kind of a a, a strange process because he also like at the same time was like, you would be amazing at this. Like we're meant to work together. Like you should study this. I was like, what in the world? You know, and like (laughs) I had just like come from a world of working a lot of startups and working with a lot of companies and just like frustrated by all the dysfunction that I observed. It was just like people like didn't understand each other, didn't understand themselves, didn't know how to work together. And so when he started to kind of reveal how human design could be used to um, not only support individuals on their own transformational path, but also in engineering engineering teams most effectively, I was just totally blown away because I just like, it felt like the bridge system I'd been looking for where it like was not so woo woo that it was like inaccessible to people that would never touch this stuff. But it was also like, there is a magic to it that it is kind of 
like revealing our soul blueprint in a way that's like so useful. So um, yeah, it's been a, it's been a wild path. It wasn't like I just started doing it and it was like, okay, the world's ready for you. You know, I think we're like <laughs> the first couple of years I was working with him, we were building a business together and it didn't feel like the world was ready. It felt like it was still really new and like there was just a lot of resistance. Um, and then I launched my own practice in 2018 and it just like, it kind of coincided with like the world just like being so much more excited and so much more ready for human design. So it's just been like a really wild journey. And I think that like, I have definitely found the most success when I've just honored my own design, which like my design is all around waiting for an invitation. And like my first iteration of my human design business, we were like reaching out to people and like pitching companies, you know what I mean? <laughs> and now, now I just like make it my job on Instagram and in other places to just like share about what I do in a really broad way. And by doing that and offering value in that way, it attracts all the right people to me and so like it's been really beautiful to trust that and watch it in action and see like what I've been able to build from that and it's so funny because I was doing the opposite where my design is to initiate and I was yeah. like no no no, I must stand back I must let things come to me because it's what I like you know all my like divine feminine work and all of this kind yeah. of like receiving work that I did um mm -hmm. and it was so interesting because I was just I, don't, I can't even remember where this is from if I was meditating or I was like channel journaling the other night, but, but I just keep on more and more getting this message uh, that what we're supposed to do here on earth is be the, the most truest expression of who we really are. Mm -hmm. Right. And I feel like human design echoes that so much in the way of it just is letting you know, no, this is actually how you're built. And I feel like almost everybody I know that has had a reading or has, you know, gotten like, you know, a, a printout of what their, their situation is. It is that feeling of like, oh, this has been my natural inclination all along <laughs> and having that permission to be like, oh, I can really be myself. I can really honor that this is how I work or this is how I process things or, you know. And I'll be the so most successful when I do that. Exactly. And that, how amazing is that? You get to be the most successful it's when you're just being yourself. I mean, it's so cool. And it's also, I love what you said too, because I think that so often, like when I'm talking to people, they're like, this reminds me of how I was showing up when I was like five or six and mm -hmm. like, didn't have all this conditioning around who I was supposed to be. And so like, that's why it's such a cool tool in parenting as well, because like when you're actually giving them permission to be who they are from day one, like they can just live it, you know, but where we often get tripped up is like, we're being ourselves and then we're like, oh, should we be something else? And then we just like get locked into this path that isn't really ours. And so it's like human design reminds us to differentiate. It reminds us to be different and, and like trust that success comes when I do that. Oh my God. I read a thing too about like um, parenting for my design mm -hmm. <laughs> and it, it helps you have so much compassion for your parents because so much of what I experienced oh growing up that I interpreted as being somewhat traumatic was simply, you know, parents that didn't know how to deal with mm -hmm. someone that had my design mm -hmm. and what a little force I was from such an early age. Um, and yeah, so just so, okay, so much to get into. Let's start, let's start at the basics. So we have the different designs, the different yeah. like overall energy types. And let's talk about for the different overall energy types, what someone should know as far as, I think let's, let's try to keep this in the context of like stepping up and being a leader, mm -hmm. but just in how they work and how they operate. Yeah, yeah totally. So in human design, there are about 2 billion different configurations. So like the type is just the first piece. Like there's so much uniqueness. If you're like, oh, wow, I resonate with pieces from different types. So normal. But high level, there are five different types. So there are generators, manifesting generators, projectors, reflectors, and manifestors. So the majority of the population make up generators and manifesting generators. And so these are kind of like our energy beings, the people that have like the energy and the life force to kind of build and create and make things happen. Most important thing in the world is that they're doing work that is deeply satisfying fine to them. I can't tell you how many clients I sit with that are like, oh yeah, like I've been successful in this career because I have this amazing vitality and energy and life force. But like that doesn't really reach its potential unless they're so excited by what they're doing. So it could be anything. It could be working for someone. It could be working for themselves. It could be being a CEO, but like just like always honoring, like what do I feel like I naturally have the energy for and how can I just like funnel my energy into that thing? And knowing that when I do that, I basically create energy for literally everyone around me. Um, so the difference between the two is that manifesting generators often 
thrive when they have their energy in a lot of things at once. They're not really meant to do just one thing. So they're kind of multi-passionate by nature and have often made themselves wrong for like being too scattered or doing too much. Like they're probably going to struggle a little bit in a super linear job where they don't have the freedom to do a lot of things. Um, Mm -hmm. And they can also move incredibly quickly, but in doing so they can skip some steps along the way. So I'd always recommend they have support around them that kind of handle the step-by-step process. Whereas generators are more around mastering the process, kind of going deep into something and then when it's time moving on. So key for both of these types is to know that their strategy is about magnetism. They are meant to let things come to them. Their work is to open up their awareness and pay attention to what's showing up and not initiate until they get the gut response that it's the right use of their energy. Mm. So yeah, so those two types are, are, I think, a lot of what we hear about when we kind of hear about that, that magnetism and being magnetic and whatnot. Um, So if you're a generator or a manifesting generator, that's you that they're speaking to. Also really interesting because would you say just on the concept of um, specializing or niching or whatnot, that would be more of a generator, right? Where a manifesting generator might want to have a couple different options of things. I think so. And like, I never want to like generalize too much. So like what, one thing I would just remind you guys of is that like human design is meant to like empower you, you know what I mean? And never meant to limit you. So if you're like, oh my God, I shouldn't do this because I'm a generator, but I really want like, do what you, feel, you know what I mean? Like follow your gut. Like that's always going to trump everything. Um, but it is like, yes, I think generators, like they often, like they can really master and go very deep into something. It doesn't mean they can't move on, like when it's time to move on, but manifesting generators, like if they feel the pressure to be like, I've got to master one thing, like actually they're probably going to be more successful when they're doing five different things at once. Like these are my clients that are like, I'm a podcast host. I like own a dance studio. I'm a lawyer. And I'm, a, I'm just like, that's their magic. You know, and everyone's like, you're doing too much. You're not finishing it all. And like, they're not meant to. And so like, they're, they're just kind of seeing that as a gift and not as something that's wrong with them. I love that. I love yeah. that. Um, so for both of those types, just like always kind of taking inventory, what is energizing them the most? What is the most depleting? How can they pull their energy out of that thing and free themselves up? It could just be like a weekly gathering that is exhausting you, you know? Um, but just like those little things are going to really play a big role. Um, for projectors, so projectors are really the ones that are here to kind of be like the leaders, the guides, the advisors, the teachers. Their biggest work is knowing that they're not here to do all the doing. Like their gift is in their perspective, the way that they see the world. They're so good at kind of like being very sensitive to energy and helping people know how to best use their energy. So that can make them amazing like coaches, CEOs, managers, therapists, like, you know, it, the potential runs, what they can do kind of runs the gamut. But most important is that they're honoring the ebbs and flows of their energy and they're not getting lost in how much they can do and not deriving their worth from that. And as a projector, it's also trusting that like your perspective and way of seeing the world is so key. And so it's very important for you to kind of be recognized and invited into things before engaging. Because if you're brought into something and expected to operate like a generator, you're probably not going to be great at it. But when people kind of recognize your unique value and invite you in to share that, that's where you can really thrive. So always asking yourself, where do I feel the most recognized? Where do I feel the most invited in? How can I funnel my energy into those things? Ooh, that's so interesting. That makes would, sense. Yeah. How does that feel? Um, I mean, I know that this could be for any of the energy types, but that energy type could also be someone that starts their own thing, right? Totally. It's like, it it would be like, they have an idea, but they kind of build people like around them, a team around them that can support them in doing that, Mm, you know? And and the invitation is the most important when it comes to like sharing your gifts with people. Like, it's like, I don't like, I was actually kind of weirdly invited into study human design, but like, I wouldn't have needed an invitation for that. Like you don't need an invitation to like study a system or move to a new city, but what involves like really sharing your gifts, like working with someone, living with someone, dating someone, just so important that the recognition is there. And it might not always be formal, but yeah, projectors can make amazing founders as long as they have the right support. Whenever there are two projector founders, I'm like, you guys are going to have the most amazing ideas, but it might be a little bit harder to get the thing off the ground. You know what I mean? Like I've always had a generator or manifesting generator business partner because that energy do so necessary I love that yeah most of my best friends are projectors um but it definitely I've learned over the years by me inquiring more Mm -hmm. I receive more from them Mm -hmm. um and they do they have an amazing outlook Uh, definitely I always feel like they have a gift at least in what my experience of it is in my life a real gift of like seeing an eagle's eye view of a situation or like a bigger broader perspective on how things are going to play out ultimately so I love uh, you know them being my counsel (laughs) <laughs> yeah, and that's and that's what they're so good at is taking that broader perspective and knowing like how to fully leverage one like each person to kind of like make something happen. 
Um, but again, like if they get caught in the doing, it's just like then they burn out and aren't able to kind of leverage that gift. And one of our biggest shadows as projectors is literally not knowing when to stop. So we can mm-hmm. like think that we're super generators and then just realize that we like totally burn out in that process. So yes, being kind of the counselor, the guidance, like just the best place. And also projectors, like their gift is making people feel incredibly seen and recognized, like locking into someone and kind of offering that perspective in such a powerful way. Mm. And then we have manifestors. Which is <laughs> So manifest, go ahead. Yeah, so I'm a manifester and I let Aaron um, have my chart so that, you know, as it comes up, my hope is that if she can share things about me, that you guys, especially you guys that have followed me or like have, you know, heard me on some of the podcasts, know my story, know how I am a lot. (laughs) Um, You can kind of just see how that ends up kind of coming out in different ways. Mm -hmm. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But (laughs) So manifestors are the ones that are here to initiate, the ones that are here to kind of get things started, make things happen, not wait for things to come to you. Often manifestors operate best, especially you actually, like when they're kind of just like left alone to do what they please. Like they're really not here to be like told what to do or guided or manage in any way. And they can often struggle a little bit if they're working for a company and like put in like have strong boundaries around like what they're allowed to do. Like they're often like succeed when they just have freedom. So that could be like freedom within a company that could just be like charting their own path. They often can be very innovative and can kind of see the future and feel like everyone else is like a little bit behind the times. Um, And they are here to initiate, but not always here to do all the doing, you know? So for you as well, it will be good to like have the right support around you, whether it's generators, whatever support or projectors asking you the right questions um, that can kind of like help you bring something to life. And so the strategy for manifestors is all about initiating. Like they're here to be a little bit provocative in their energy and like always make the first move. And like, doesn't mean that people are always like, we're in it with you, but it'll kind of attract the right people in. And often one of the biggest shadows for manifestors is that they like don't really trust their power and they start to like shrink in it and like start to ask for permission or people please and their workers to be like so unapologetic in who they are and just trust that by doing that, like they're going to really trigger some people and inspire all the right ones, but it kind of requires you standing so tall and exactly who it is you are. Um, And so, yeah, your strategy is initiating, making the first move, but also around informing always keeping people up to date and in the loop of what you're choosing and when if you don't inform and communicate people are going to just like resist you or be suspicious or wonder what you're doing (laughs) and so just like letting people know what you do before you do it allows you to find so much more ease and so much more peace and so much more success in your life even though it's often not a very natural practice not natural at all at all but (laughs) but yeah no for so many years I always felt like I was unemployable um because I just like I do it's like I perish kind of under too much rules or lack of freedom it doesn't work um and yeah and I do my best when I'm alone and like I love a lot of alone time but I know that's other parts of my design as well um but yeah and it was just so that was so helpful for me I remember when I learned about that and I also learned about and I don't know if this is correct me if I'm wrong because this could be (laughs) something else in my chart but I remember then I learned that like I wasn't supposed to one I don't have the energy of a generator at all so when I first started I actually had certain people that were supporting me that were kind of trying to have me work in a more generator-esque fashion Mm -hmm. where I had like more nine to five hours and more like regular and I just it doesn't work for me Mm -hmm. um I get so like my creativity gets drained and I just like feel like my life sucked out so it was so freeing to just understand, okay, you know, and same thing for, I think my projector friends who are going through that too, to realize that actually we're not all designed to work the same hours or in the same way. And it's okay for us to, and especially when I talk about, you know, cause I, I talk to a lot of people that want to start their own thing and do their own thing, like kind of like we do. And what I see happening is that they create the thing and they create it like a regular job. Mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. instead of designing it which is why I think human design is so valuable if you are thinking about doing your own thing or if you now as we're entering this yes. new era of like I want to say more alternative workplaces where you're seeing more people get to work from home more people get to work in hours that work for them you know mm-hmm. which I think is really going to ultimately benefit companies mm-hmm. um and even create when we create our own businesses it's like create your own business around your energy type right? And around how it works for you and around how your energy flows. Because for me, I have a very like stop starty energy. That's the magic of your energy. 
Like I get so excited about something. I'll launch something. You'll even notice, like I just launched this spread your light thing. And I've been like pretty dark on Instagram for a few days because I literally just need to sleep. <laughs> I just been sleeping. It's so, yeah. No, <laughs> it's so funny. I literally like just posted an Instagram post about this. Like, really? Yeah. And it's just like, it's, and it's true for like a lot of different types, but again, for manifestors, it's like, you do have energy, but it's like the energy does operate so much in spurts. And it is this kind of like initiating energy where it's like getting something off the ground and then needing to rest and recharge before you like work again. And so, and you specifically have a quality in your design based on one of your kind of channels or strengths that like you can actually do a lot more in like three hours and like most people can in a whole day, you know? (laughs) And so it's just like one leverage and that efficiency, but also just like honoring those spurts, because if you try to like have the stamina to power through the day, you're going to burn out similar to projectors in a different way. Like our energy operates in ebbs and flows and like, we've got to just rest when we need and like trust that we'll like leverage the energy when it's there. And it's true for reflectors as well. But like, yeah, you've got a very powerful initiating energy, but it is in spurt. So like, you're going to find the most success when you just honor that, which it sounds like you totally do. I've gotten there. I've gotten there now. Um, but you're right. It definitely comes with knowing who you need around you and what support you need. And I think totally. that was like getting, um, you know, getting a, support and help a VA and office manager and stuff like that was game changing for me to not be in the day to day of so much stuff. Mm. But what about reflectors? I feel like reflectors are, I don't know, very, very magical. (laughs) I know. It's something I always call them magical. Like obviously all the types are, are magical. Reflectors are so unique in like their sensitivity and it kind of operates in a different way, but like reflectors are very fluid in their identity. Like they're actually not always meant to kind of be just one thing. Like they're going to have periods where they feel like a generator, like a manifestor, like a manifesting generator, like a projector. And their work is to just like own those things when they come, but like not latch onto any of it. And so Mm -hmm. reflectors are incredibly sensitive to their physical space. They're always taking in everything in their space and kind of mirroring it back. So you actually really get a good sense of like what's going on in the space and the health of the space just by how that reflector is showing up. And their identity, like I said, is very fluid. So they're not here to put themselves in any box, but kind of like allow themselves to wake up and feel a little bit different every day and trust like that's where Mm -hmm. the magic is and not try to be like, I'm going to be this one thing. Um, Their value is so much in their perspective and the way that they see the world because they're taking it all in and kind of mirroring it back and giving us perspective on like how to progress and move forward. Mm -hmm. And so whenever I'm around a reflector, I'm literally just like asking them questions all the time. I'm like, so what do you think about this? And what do you see about this? You know, just... (laughs) Their perspective is so next level. And I always joke that in the context of companies, like one of the best places for reflectors, like kind of the CEO whisper, which I know is like an impossible job to apply for, but it's literally like being like next to the CEO, just like whispering in their ear, kind of telling them all the things that they see. Just a place where their perspective is valued. A lot of reflectors I work with are in like kind of um, like culture positions, like director of people. I've also worked with reflectors that are like personal assistants. So kind of serving the CEO in that way. So mm-hmm. it varies, but like it really, like so much of human design, it's like we just like often try to be a thing that we're not. So, so much of succeeding as a reflector is knowing that you operate by a different, by a different set of rules than everyone else and not trying to be just one thing. Yeah. I also think of like blogger when I think of that in the way, or, you know, I love that. journalist or something like that, where it's like you're sharing your perspective, but you're not like tied down to a, like a specific thing. Yes, you know? exactly. Yeah, there is, do you know Jordan Younger? Yeah, yeah, she's, one of my friends. She, yeah, she's so sweet, she's, but she's a, she's a great one because she's a reflector and uh, blogs, right? She's a perfect example of it. Yeah, she's That's the person I was thinking of too because yeah. she's able to cover, she covers so many different things, you know, yeah. that are all part of her and part of her environment and what she's moving through. Yes. You know, and it's like, yeah, even like podcaster, I feel like it's probably a great reflector kind of job, right? Because it allows her to move and anyone to move and like her work or reflectors work is to not latch onto one. Like it's very easy for reflectors and actually some other types sometimes as well to get consumed in other people's identities. So like she might get into human design, be like, I want to be a human design reader, you know? And then like, and then like two weeks later, she's like on to the next thing, you know what I mean? So it's just yeah. like honoring the things when it comes and not feeling the need to like latch onto it because like it doesn't mean that it's wrong for her but it is like because she's amplifying everyone else's identity it's so important for her to like for any reflector to take their time before they commit to things to kind of really sample something from so many different angles and kind of really confirm it's correct for them before they move forward I love that because I do I think so much so much of the kind of messaging that we see online is all about you know, you, there's like one way of doing something, Totally. (laughs) you know, and that's why I think human design is so important to look at and be like, there's actually not one way of doing something. And that actually only works. And I think a lot of what we see publicly and 
this is a generalization, but maybe it's just because I look at it because now I see it, oh, knowing what I know. I feel like a lot of messaging is geared towards generators. Um, you know, and so for the all of the other types, you're like trying to be a generator and oh, yeah. having adrenal fatigue and well, <laughs> you know, yeah. just totally burning out. And it's so funny because even some of the simplest messaging, like, you know, generators and manifesting generators, like what distinguishes them is they have very strong gut responses and the gut is going to be their most powerful tool to help them know what they're available for and when there's so much talk out there, like follow your gut, listen to your gut, trust your gut. And like you and I don't have gut responses in our human design. That doesn't exist. Like yours is all around your intuition, which it feels like you've like been so tuned into like mine's all about sleeping on things, feeling into things. Like it's just such a reminder that like, yeah, a lot of that messaging is so broad and doesn't apply to so many of us. And like, and you know, make decisions in the moment. Like some people need more time. Like there's just like human design reminds us that it's so specific to the individual. And like it, when we get caught up trying to build a business or market or do things in the way that people, the people around us are doing it, like we're often not gonna find that much success. I agree, I love it. I, this is why I think this is like the future, right? 100%. The future is us realizing this and stopping to try to fit ourselves into a mold that we weren't built for and is never gonna work for us and is not gonna help us succeed, mm -hmm. um, which I love. So you kind of get, got into it. So let's talk a little bit about that because one, can you explain to me, I know that my authority is kind of intuitive, but yeah. the difference between your, so in human design, you have this thing called an inner authority, yep. right? And it kind of feels like intuition, but it's like mm. a messenger. How would you describe it? So inner authority is how we make decisions. Okay. And which is different for all of us. Yeah. And so it basically, what you mean by inner authority, it's just like, it's the thing that we can rely on to know where to put our energy and when none of us are meant to make decisions for our mind. Our minds are incredibly powerful, but we can like convince ourselves in or out of basically anything. And yep. so the inner authority, whether it's your gut, whether it's your intuition, whether it's your voice, whether it's your emotions, all it's like, what is the specific tool that you can rely on to make sure that you're making a decision that's correct for you every single time? So do you want to walk us through just a overview of some of the yeah. um, inner authorities? So yes, yeah, so there are some people that are emotional. Emotional is possible for generators, manifesting generators, projectors, and generators. Um, and it basically means that you might have a gut response, you might have a strong intuition, but you're not designed to make decisions in the moment. For you, clarity comes with time. So the best thing that you can do when you make a decision is to sleep on things and feel into things before you commit which for me was so not the way that I was operating, but it just like, <laughs> we're kind of always riding these like emotional highs and lows and highs and lows. And when you're on a high, when I'm on a high, I'm like, yes to everything. And, you know, and then I wake up the next day and I'm like, why in the world did I commit to that? You know, so just like <laughs> taking a moment, taking a beat allows us to enter into things so much more consciously and also just enter into the right thing. It's like romantically, these people really thrive with like a period of courtship, like really like not being impulsive in their relationships and really feeling into someone. Um, then we have people that are sacral. This is possible for generators and manifesting generators. This is all about your gut response in the moment. Gut is a very visceral feeling in your belly, an expansion you feel, a contraction you feel. You can hear it in your voice. It can be like, uh-huh, uh-uh. The idea is that like when that gut response is a full body yes, absolutely go for it. Make the thing happen. If you're not getting a full body gut yes, it either means it is not the right thing or it is not the right time yet. And so the gut is not a thing that you can rationalize or make sense of. So you find yourself explaining a decision or giving reason for it, not your gut speaking. I love that. It's you know what I mean? Cue. Yeah. Well, you, and you can see it. Like I was with a client yesterday and she was just like, yeah, like, I mean, I think that I really should stay in this because I like still have something to learn. I'm just like, mm -mm. the gut is like, <laughs> feels right or it doesn't, you know what I mean? So like, you can just hear it. I always like, I did a partnership se session yesterday too, where I was kind of like um, equipping them with those tools to listen to each other so that they could really hear when the decision was coming from a gut versus another place. Um and I love that. I feel like so that's, I, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like that's almost like that with almost all of the types, right? 100%. Where it's like whenever you catch yourself rationalizing something, I think about this the other time. I know for me, like I'm doing the right thing when I can't explain why I'm doing it. <laughs> but exactly. I know I like want to oh do God, it. That down. It's so good. Yeah. <laughs> You're so right. It's like when you can explain it, it's not coming from your inner authority. When you cannot explain it and it feels right, it is like the true thing for you. Um, so you're splenic. This is possible for manifestors and projectors. And it basically is all around your intuition. Intuition is different than the gut response. Gut response is a very visceral feeling in your belly. Intuition is just like a quiet knowing. It shows up differently for people. It's a whisper. It's a, a whisper that you hear, a resonance that you feel, tingles that you feel, just like a spontaneous knowing. It is so spontaneous. So I mean, I talk about how I have to like 
take my time. I've got to feel into things. You're the opposite. You're meant to be so spontaneous, super impulsive, and just kind of make decisions in the moment. And it's so funny because I was totally operating the opposite and operating in your way. And yes. for a long time, I would be like, I would get this thing and I'd be like, let me sleep on it, like make sure. And I've just noticed that it totally doesn't work. Cause it's like, if I don't move when I feel it, it's kind of gone. Um, yeah. Which is such a good example. Like I was making decisions impulsive because like impulsively, cause I was like in the moment and then like the people that are impulsive are sleeping on things. Like we're just yeah. like, drained away from what's actually right for us. So how does it, do you feel like you've kind of allowed that spontaneity impulsiveness to kind of come through a bit more? Yeah. I feel like I trust it more. And I feel like what I'll do now is if I, cause sometimes it'll happen and it's at a really inconvenient time. Yeah. Um, I've I done my <laughs> best, I've done my best to like honor the muse, so to speak, because it pays dividends when I do like there are times, like a lot of like all of the programs I've created all like books, like anything like that, I'll get a hit. Sometimes it'll be like right before bed and I just won't sleep, mm. you know, and I'll just stay up all night and like write out the whole outline and do the whole thing. Like most of my programs were created between like 11 <laughs> and like five in the morning <laughs> and all came through at once. And I just like couldn't wow. stop it. And I was like, I don't want to stop the flow. So I know that like when it comes, if I can move my life around, I will but sometimes it's not possible, obviously, if like I'm on a client call or I'm doing something like that. Mm -hmm. I have post-its, you can't see it, but I literally have like post-its like everywhere because <laughs> I'm, like, I'm, I'm like that, like the, the like meme you see on Instagram with like the really cracked out guy with like a thousand different post-its everywhere with like the formula. <laughs> oh, good. So I do that just to keep track of them so that even in that moment, if I can't, like, I'm really sure of like what was coming through in that moment. And it's definitely been a process. I think it's definitely a process because I've realized that a lot of times when things come through, it is, it's like a very kind of, it's like almost like a nothingness knowing that's how it feels to me where I will get, what did I get the other day? That was just like, there's a few different things I've had. Like I've been dealing with some health stuff recently and it's literally like, like a passing thought <laughs> that will come about something that makes no sense, like makes some sense, but makes really no sense in context right. to what I was thinking about previously. And so that's how I'll know that something is speaking to me. <laughs> totally. But I love that. It's such a good example. Because it's just like, I, I don't know where that came from. That was not like a linear thought. Like it just emerged and like that, you know, that's a helpful note of like how to distinguish intuition. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That's been helpful. And then I think with that, it's like the more you follow it, the more yeah. you affirm it and you're like, oh, that's, you know. And the louder it gets. And like of all the ways of making decisions, the splenic one is the absolute quietest. So I often <laughs> recommend for these people, like, you know, having a meditation practice, like being in nature, like taking time away from other people, like all powerful tools to kind of disconnect from other people's energy and connect to what's true for you. Absolutely. Meditation is essential. Yeah. Uh, you know, at least for me. And that's one of those things where I feel like having that quiet time and I get my best insights when I'm meditating or doing breath work or walking on the beach you know, by oh. myself, for sure. By myself yes. all the time. <laughs> all the time. Well, it's also because like, if you're splenic, it inevitably means that there are a lot of areas in your design where you are kind of very sensitive, like specifically to like other people's emotions, other people's energy. So knowing that it's like, you know, for you, it could be really easy. Like if you and I were together say, and I was like, oh my God, like I have this idea for like a program we could do together. Like, I'm so excited. You could get like wrapped up in my emotional excitement and be like, okay, let's do it. You know? And then you might pull away from my energy and be like, it doesn't actually feel right to me. Like it's, you know what I mean? Like all the time. It's so, all the it's, time. <laughs> and I have so many projectors around me with so many good ideas totally. and, you know, and I will like in that cocoon yes. be so susceptible um, to that influence. And then I, now I've learned in those things where I will be like, this, I'm super excited about this, but I need to meditate on it. Um, right. so that's been my kind of like, I'm going to sleep on it. It's like, I need to meditate on it because you're absolutely right. And it took me too long to learn that, yeah. that I, I don't often keep from you. Yeah. <laughs> I just, but now my friends just know, they know they're like, plant the seed and they'll be like, I know, go meditate on it. <laughs> totally. totally. But it is, it is just like, it's so easy to get consumed. And so just like pulling back to your own energy. So no, knowing that it's coming from that place. Yeah. Um, 
And then we have ego people. This is true for manifestors or projectors, basically all about making decisions based on whether or not your heart's in it, whether or not you have the willpower to do something. Mm -hmm. I encourage these people to be like healthily selfish, like always ask themselves, like what's in it for me? Like, will this decision truly take care of me? There are some people that are self-projected, only possible for projectors, which means they're meant to like, their truth becomes clear when they give it a voice. So the best thing that they can do is surround themselves with people that they trust and just let themselves talk. And kind wow. of let the truth pop out of their mouth. Ooh, yeah. so fascinating. So fast. So like voice recording, journaling, like talking to themselves, all very useful. Um, some people are what we call mental projectors. These people, like they need to talk things out, but often in different environments around different people. And they're so sensitive to their environment. So it's good to plant themselves in different spaces and kind of talk things out in a few different environments to know whether or not it's correct. And then for reflectors, I'm sure you heard this one, which is so wild and unique is that they're actually meant to give themselves a full 30 days or a full lunar cycle before they commit. And the idea is that like they need to sample something from so many different options before they actually know it's correct for them. That is wild. That it takes a lot of patience. It does. <laughs> but every reflector I talk to just gets it. Like there's part of me that's like, oh my God, like I have to sleep on things like how in the world. And sometimes they're just like, yeah, I've got to wait multiple cycles sometimes, you know? And like, it's not like they're going to just like be sitting and like pausing on life. Like, you know, maybe they take a job and give themselves permission to leave in 30 days if it doesn't feel right then, you yeah. know? But, I've had reflector clients that get so into a thing and then three weeks later, like they're done with it. So like, it just actually saves them so much time in the long run because it basically just like ensures, like I said, that they're actually like committing their energy to the right things and not jumping into things like on a whim and then having to like find their way out later. Oh, oh my gosh. So helpful. So good. helpful. Good. Good. Um, so now, okay. In the context of finding your purpose or your calling, where yeah. do you look in human design for that? So, you know, something I appreciate about human design, because I have people that would come to me and they're like, okay, like, you know, what am I supposed to do with my life? And like, when am I going to make my partner? Like, how much money am I going to make? And I'm like, I can't tell you that. And then what I can, you know what I mean? (laughs) I think that like, what human design does is it basically like helps us in like find alignment in our lives. And it's basically by making like one aligned decision at a time that like everything else Mm. emerges. And so I think in terms of like finding our purpose, it's by like honoring your design and honoring who you are. You know what I mean? And honoring what you're drawn to, like say you're a generator and you're like, I don't know what I want to do with my life. So I'm just going to give this job that I don't enjoy. Like actually Mm. for a generator, it's like, how can I actually like continue to commit my energy to things that I really enjoy? Even if I have no idea where it's going to take me, even if it's not always career related and trust that like one step at a time is going to like the whole thing will unveil itself you know yeah. and so it is just like it's a reminder that we can't really architect our future um there are pieces in our design there's something called the profile which definitely like speaks to you and I are both six twos and so that can speak to like how we can best manifest our purpose so for like us it's all about like doing things that we're like natural at and like not doing the things that feel super hard and doing things that feel like super challenging um and just like doing the things that come very easy also like you and I both carry this like kind of role model teacher energy where it's like people kind of like naturally trust you and look to you for advice and like your gift is kind of staying above the fray and like offering a perspective that can really help people um there's also something called the incarnation cross but I often don't share that with people because it's not very actionable it basically is a thing that naturally emerges later in life when we just honor our design and there are 192 of them, you know, so like, and there's yeah. just so many, but like, for instance, my incarnation cross is all around, around like saying the same thing over and over again, and just finding like, kind of like new simple ways of just like articulating information in a way that can cause breakthroughs for people. And so like, it's just a helpful thing. Cause I, yeah, like, that's I really I'm helpful. doing okay. You know, like you're I doing great at that. that. I mean, like, that's so, perfect. I, and it so, makes so much sense too. Right. So it's just like, there are pieces like that, that I think can be reminders, but we're never actually going to find our purpose by seeking it out, you know, or like trying to make it happen. I'd be like, okay, what is a career in which I'll do that? It's like by honoring how we're meant to make decisions, how we're meant to cultivate opportunities for ourselves, that it just emerges. And I just like, and I appreciate that because so much of human design is not about taking your power away, but giving it back to you. You know yeah. what I mean? Not about like being like, oh, how can I look to other people to tell me what to do with my life? But like, how can I actually connect to myself to actually move through life in a way that's really authentic to me? I love that. And I think it is. It's true. It's about being able to organically be led to that by you showing up as the fullest, truest expression of yourself. And the more you're learning to listen to your inner authority for making decisions, the more you're operating within your energy, then the more you'll be led um, to what it is to do. Exactly. And it just emerges. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it just like, and it does kind of really encourage like a very powerful sense of trust. Like, it's like, you are here to initiate, you're here to listen to your intuition, but like, 
it's not like your intuition is going to be like, this is where it's taking you. And this is what it's going to look like in five years. And this is when you'll meet, you know what I mean? It's just like, absolutely moment by moment that like everything does emerge. Yeah. And I think there is a lot, like a lot of trust in knowing and also just knowing, reiterating, I think that it's not going to look the same for everyone. Like, and you following your inclinations and your, your path to manifesting or your path to, you know, yes. following what lights you up is going to look different than other people's and being okay with that. Totally and trusting that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So is there anything on my chart that you see that you think would be interesting to like call out or point out? Yeah. So, um, you know, things that I are really interested to look at in people's charts are, I mean, there's so much, it's like kind of endless, but I think one is that, oh, one thing I wanted to mention before I go into like some pieces, cause there's a deeper layer around like your environment. Um, you've got a piece of, I don't know how deeply you've gone into your environment, but for you, we all have like different environments and yours is all around kind of like being in like the hustle of things and being in the flow and actually running a business out of your house. <laughs> it's, not, it's not about like going out to work. It's about like bringing people to you and like, oh <laughs> which is just feels like so what you do, right? Or at least it was when I yeah, no, five years ago. <laughs> yeah. No, that's absolutely what I do. I bring everyone to me. This is my home office here. Yeah, it's so good for you to do that. So I was just like laughing because I saw that. And like, that's so much of human And design. I didn't know that at all. But right? I but love that's it. The magic of human design is that it's not like you're like, oh, how can I do that? It's like when you're in flow and aligned with your design, the stuff just happens. And yeah. human design just like continues to kind of like, refine it so we can get like more and more aligned with our past so um you know some really interesting areas to look at is there's an area called our channels in human design our channels are basically just like our innate strengths um again not so actionable these pieces but just good reminders of like what we're here to do so like some key strengths for you is one you've got like the strength of like sales and marketing <laughs> which is so interesting because i know <laughs> you do right I mean, I, not in a conventional sense, mm -mm. but you know, but yes, I guess people always, you know, I'll have girlfriends text me when I'm like launching stuff and they'll be like, oh, you're so on like, you know, or, you know, ask me about like copywriting and stuff. And I'm like, I have no, I, I don't do any of that. Like I just show up and get really connected to who I'm here to serve and the value that whatever the thing is could give. And like, my intention is always how clearly can I communicate it? And I really believe that if I communicate it as clearly as possible to the person that needs it, then, then the, you know, the right like partnership will evolve from that. But it's 100%. like, but if you, it's funny because if you asked me like, would I be interested in doing like a sales or marketing course? No. I'd be like, no way, I can't do that. And it's not even a thing that I could, that I'd say you even like teach. It's just like, it means that like, specifically, it's like, you've got this like intuition to basically message things in a way that people can really hear. And actually it. adapt your messaging to lots of different audiences, but it's all based. It all comes from your intuitive center, which is know? so it's it, which is so fascinating, right? To think that, and that's I've, I've always said too. Like since I started my business, I've always said that like my intuition is my CEO, like mm -hmm. my intuition is my whole be. business. Mm -hmm. I love is that. that for everyone or is that for me? That's for you. Okay. Yeah. And so again, not even like trying to tell people they should do it that way. Like they're going to have their own. Exactly. Yeah. No, that's why I wanted to just clarify that. <laughs> yeah, that's for you. And like, and it, and it really is such a gift. And again, it's about like, the thing is you could actually probably sell anything if you tried, but it's all about just like selling things that actually matter to you, you know? And you've also got this amazing um, strength around, like we call it the strength of shock, but the idea is it's really about like, which is like, so, you know, weird, but the idea is that you're going to have these kind of, you're meant to have these like powerful experiences in your life that just like kind of shock you into like the next level of your like own spiritual awareness, um, which can be dramatic and it doesn't have to be, but like I had a session with a woman recently who had like a car accident, had like a pretty traumatic brain injury who has this channel, but it's just like, it has opened up so much for her. And it was so interesting to talk about this because there are just these moments that just like kind of like level you up in a big way. And so it's allowing that, but also knowing that you're here to shock other people like out of complacency, just like into a new way of doing things. You know, it is important to make sure that your audience, and I think you do this and people are like really ready for it. You don't want to just like go like, <laughs> like initiating them when they're like, no, I'm not ready. So like, um, so just like having the space, but again, it is a really amazing ability in um, yeah. And just kind of like moving people into a new way of doing things and leveling them up in a lot of ways. Mm, I love but it. I love it. You feel that? 
<laughs> yeah. Um, there are also areas in our design where we are kind of the most sensitive to taking in other people's energy. Mm. And so one area for you is like, you're just very sensitive to kind of other people's emotions, which means that like, not only can you feel other people's stuff, but you can actually experience it in an amplified way and often more intense than they feel it, you know? And so the work is to know that how to mm. discern between what's yours and what's not. Like helping people like give language to what they're feeling, like understand what they're feeling, but not take it on as your own, you know, and like knowing when to physically remove yourself and like kind of just like make sure that you're coming back to your own neutrality and not like operating from someone else's emotional high or low. Absolutely. I think that is huge. And I think the open, I think you call them open centers, right? Yep. I think that is something that's so helpful to know about yourself yeah. because that is like, for me, I definitely, even with, with close friends, when someone is going through an intense emotional experience, it's almost like I'm also going through that intense emotional experience with them. Mm -hmm. And so I have to be hyper conscious of self care and taking that time and, and being really aware. Like when I have people in my life that are going through those kinds of intense emotional things, I won't take their call before I'm going to hop on a podcast or a session or something like that, because energetically I know that like once I open that container I can't and I even I went through a period actually a few years ago where I really had to a changing of the guards around my friends because it was really hard for me to have friends that were constantly emotionally struggling um because I just and it was insane like I felt I can't even tell you how horrible I felt about it like I felt so guilty but I also felt incredibly guilty because afterwards it was like, (laughs) it sounds awful, but it was like amazing for me. Like the difference I noticed in my energy from shifting who I spoke to on the phone during the day, from Mm -hmm. shifting who I allowed kind of like in, in that way, completely transformed my life. Mm -hmm. Like on a really big level, because I had no idea that I felt like I was also, you know, emotionally upset all the time because of the people I was constantly talking to so so something like that I actually didn't know that from my human design at the time when it happened I just intuitively knew that that energy was affecting me in some way Mm -hmm. and then I noticed that when there was a break in that energy how much it shifted my emotional energy (laughs) no I just like I so feel I just I love that tool of not opening up that kind of like window before having a conversation but like I do often recommend for people to like just take physical space you know what I mean because it's like even I was doing a session with a guy yesterday whose wife specifically like impacts her him because like other people are going to project out their emotional energy you're going to take it in so like for him he's like trying to deal with it in the moment but he's just amplifying her stuff and actually the best thing that he can do is like go for a walk reconnect with his neutrality and then like engage from there you Mm -hmm. know so it's like it can get a little bit confusing if you start to take things on as your own like my I have the opposite of you where I like project it out and my partner it takes it in so like when I'm in the kind of emotional low he's just like see you later Aaron like enjoy (laughs) you know what I mean I'm like not in a way that's rude at all but in a way that I know that's not mine and I also know that you're in a wave and like if you just like feel all the feelings like clarity will always be on the other side and so like rather than try to get in it with you like I'm gonna let you go through your process and like I'm ready for you when you're out you know and that's been so useful and so educational for me because like in, rather than trying to explain it or make sense of it and like him amplifying it or make it about him then it's just like it's just so much easier to just feel the feels um, oh my gosh and I feel like this is also super helpful with partners just on like a basic level my fiance is a generator mm-hmm. and one of the things I learned very early on when we moved in together was that I was picking up his work ethic and his energy and I was oh, trying right. to like he's a neurosurgeon he works insane hours and then he comes home and he works more and I I, like when I it's great when I'm in my like when I'm in my thing and I'm like don't bother me like I'm in the zone I'm staying up all night I'm doing it like he totally gets it which is a heaven sent and need for me but when I'm not when I'm in like a, a lull when I'm in a period of like recouping and resting it really took a lot for me to be able to be like okay it's okay that like you're still working right now or you're doing this, but like, I need to take a bath. Mm -hmm. I need to go for a walk. Like I'm not working today and I don't care if it's Tuesday, Mm -hmm. you know, (laughs) I'm not working, you know? And that was like such a, such a thing when you're around generators, I learned from human design too. Um, As a manifester, sometimes you can try to 
to be the, to be in their energy flow and it's really not good for your body it's not and it, our, our bodies just are meant to do that sustainably so it's like you can be around a generator and like leverage that energy for a little bit but you've got to know when to pull away because like one of our biggest shadows that you and i both share as a projector and a manifestor this is true for reflectors too is literally not knowing when to stop it's like generators and manifesting generators like their energy will just like it's done and they've got to get a bit, you know what I mean? And then it's yeah. and they're going to recharge and they're going to wake up energized if they're excited by what they're doing. But like, because we don't have our same consistent energy that we're always drawing from, we literally just don't know where to stop. And then it's very easy for us to kind of overdo things. Mm. And so it's just so important to know that. So it's like, yeah, I'm like picking up on this energy. Like I'm going to really get some stuff done, but I'm also going to know when to pull away and when to go to yoga and when to go on a walk and disconnect from it because I know that it's not mine. Yeah. And, and as we're closing can we touch on the not self? Like how does each energy type, I guess, maybe if there's more, I think it's just by energy type. I don't yeah, know. It is. Okay, cool. So there's only be a few. Um, how do you, yeah. How does each energy type kind of know that they're not operating? They're either operating their not self or they're not kind of operating by design. Yeah. So for generators and manifesting generators, a sense of being off track is a feeling of frustration which often shows up as like a resentment or dissatisfaction in the work that you're doing, like you're initiating things that's not happening for you. On track is a feeling of deep satisfaction. The point is not to eradicate frustration, but use it as a tool to course correct. And so when it comes up to just like kind of actually pull your energy out of the thing, when it becomes the overwhelming feeling in like a client situation or with a partner, then kind of wait for your gut to pull you back in. Ooh. For projectors, off track is a sense of bitterness and on track is a sense of success. Success can be super material. Like I feel recognized. I feel appreciated. When we're off track, it's often not feeling recognized, not feeling appreciated. Being like, I know all the things. Why doesn't anyone see it? You know? And like, for me, when bitterness has come up, it's really been like just a, a red flag of like, either this is not the right engagement for me and for me anymore or like I need to see if the invitation is still there sometimes the invitation needs to be renewed like sometimes it's just like we need to kind of resume and see whether or not the recognition is still there so that's been so powerful for me for manifestors off track is anger which is often like when your creative flow is disrupted when you can't like be in control in the way that you know that you're meant to <laughs> and on track is a sense of just peace you're informing you're letting people know you're manifesting with ease you're just kind of moving through life in your own flow and in a way that feels good um, and then for reflectors, off track is a sense of disappointment, which is often when they're kind of taking in stuff that's not there is like getting lost in it. And a sense of being on track is surprise. It's like allowing themselves to kind of wake up feeling a little bit different every day, depending on where they are and who they're with and kind of honoring that flow. Oh, I love that. That was also a big thing for me. And I think it surprised a lot of, definitely surprised my partner. He probably sees it the most that I, cause I don't come off as someone that you would think would get super angry, Totally. <laughs> but I definitely have a great capacity for anger. And it is true. It happens when I feel like my freedom is being constricted. And I yeah, I mean, I don't we, love that, but it's a great description. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, and we had to literally you know, create a game plan for that yes, because yes, I had a yeah. very different life before <laughs> yeah. partnership. Yes. Um, yes. And obviously like you also have to operate like, you know, in the human world too. And like sometimes, totally. <laughs> you know, it's like coming up with that game plan. And I think that's why it helps recognizing your type so much and seeing those things and being like, okay, why am I feeling angry? Well, you know, I was feeling, literally, I would be feeling angry when we had, like, you know, certain engagements that we had to go to or whatnot. And I was like, but I just got this inspiration. I don't want to go. And I have to go. And, like, whatever. And I was used to being able to be like that in my old life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) You know? And and realizing that, like, okay, I need to be able to communicate this and communicate, you know, I need this much space or I need to do this. And so now Mm -hmm. we have, like, a good system where he knows that if some, if it's that, it doesn't always happen. So it's not like I'm always flaking out on things, but yes. if I have that moment where inspiration strikes or I need the space or I feel like something's coming totally. through, I can just be like, love you, but I need, I need a few hours today. <laughs> right. And not asking for permission. It's like, that's an informing piece of like, I'm going to go, I've got to do this, you know? Yeah. Totally. And knowing that like, that's the best way that he can actually support you. Yeah. I love it. I love it. So uh, for anyone that's listening I think you can probably hear just from this. I feel like we could talk about there's so much of human design. And as you just like even got into it, just a few of like my gates and my open centers, there's so much you learn about yourself through this process. Um, And I feel like a lot of it is already self-explanatory, but just to kind of like tie a nice little bow on it, you want to just 
just overall say like, what, what can they expect if they get, Aaron has this awesome offer right now where you can get a blueprint, which mm-hmm. is literally like a whole personalized report yeah. of your design and a lot of the things that we went over, but in more detail specifically yeah. for you and kind of how they all work together for you. Mm-hmm. Um, what, what do you think um, just overall, like what can someone really shift in their life from knowing this? So honestly, it just like brings us into alignment so quickly. Like, I think that so often I say that, like, we don't often need more information. We just need like the right information at the right time and the tools to actually implement it, you know? And I think that like what human design does is it offers the self-knowledge of making us feel incredibly seen and recognized for who we uniquely are and gives us just like all the basic tools to step into it. And like in a way that you actually can start integrate integrating day to day because like you even just with the piece we talked about decision making it's like we're making decisions literally every single day and so when we start to do that in a way that's aligned when we start to build our businesses in a way that's aligned with our strategy like you know we start to understand what are all the areas in which we can take the get taken the most off track so we can be aware of those things and kind of like make sure we're not getting lost in them like what are our strengths like how can we lean into them more so I think just like it is a self-knowledge and the tools and like the magic is in having both of those things Yes. And your homework, all of you guys that are listening, (laughs) your homework for the episode is even if you have to listen to it over again, which I'm sure you don't because you probably wrote it down when you were talking about your thing. Yeah. um, I want you to just play around for the next week or two on what it would be like to unapologetically listen to your inner authority, to be really conscious when you're making decisions, listening to your inner authority and paying attention to your specific energy profile. So whether that's if you're a generator, being conscious of following what lights you up, manifesting generator, generator, following what lights you up. If you're a manifester, taking that initiative, being willing to take initiative and informing, but not asking for permission. Um, If you're a projector, waiting for that invitation to Mm -hmm. share your view and noticing, just observing where the space is where you're invited to. Um, where do you feel seen and accepted and, 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 and a reflector allowing yourself to honor and feel free to correct me if any of this is off, but (laughs) you know, if you're a reflector, just allowing yourself to honor all the different things that you're moving through and not feeling like you have to overly commit if it doesn't feel right to you yet. And, um, and just see how that, that alone, I think is going to epically transform yeah. your life and give you so much more clarity and so much more guidance on the things that you're meant to do in the places you're meant to go. Um, and then head on over. Erin has, like I said, Erin Claire Jones and she'll, the links will be in all of the, um, the show notes below wherever you're listening to this. Um, check her out on Instagram. She has a great Instagram, literally always giving little nuggets of different things that you can get valuable information on, as well as getting her blueprint. I think that's just a great place to get started. Yeah. Um, it's, it's super affordable if you're like not ready to do a full on deep dive session yet. It also is just a good starting place to, you know, totally. really digest that and start utilizing that in your life. And then I feel like as, as I found with human design, you just keep on wanting to go deeper and deeper and deeper into the totally. rabbit hole because totally. it just feels like you're like unraveling into who you're supposed to be this whole time. I love that so much. And there's endless information. Yeah, I love it. I think the intention of the blueprint is to give you all those key pieces, but yeah, in a way that you can keep returning to. And then like, when you want to go deeper, you can do a session, you can do other pieces, but it is like, it's just, it's so important when you like master those key pieces. It's going to make such a difference in our lives. Yay! Well, so thank you. Discount. Yes. Oh, yes, yes. You're giving us a discount. What is yes. the code? What do you want the code to be? No, we can make it uh, CAS. How about just that? Like C A S S? Perfect. The code is CAS. <laughs> the code is CAS for a discount. <laughs> Oh, I'll good. put it in the show notes. Thank you so much for being on and for all of your beautiful information. This was so fun. And I know it's going to be so helpful for everyone listening. Oh my God. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me on. It's so fun talking to somebody that like has gone deep into it already. It's really like, I love the way that you frame those last questions. So such an honor to be here. Yay. Bye guys. See you next time.